Welcome back to another uh, edition of the Practical Shaman podcast, where we bring to, together people who live their life in in harmony with nature and the seasons. And I'm very excited for our guest today because she was instrumental in one of my first appearances ever when I got up to talk about, I don't even remember now what I was talking about, so it must have been very important. Other than that, it was the first time I was talking about anything in public. And Shima Maria Yesboro is, is that right? Did I get That's that right. All right. She's an earth wisdom yes. founder, author and teacher, and she's the founder of Yesboro Earth Wisdom. She is a native raised in the traditional philosophy of Apache, Tillish, and Dayan, and she comes from the lineage of Dayan and Dayagoti, holiness, holy ones and trackers. Oh, good. Maybe we can talk about a little tracking today. She we can. She has LLD in eco-psychology as well as years of living earth wisdom. She has worked throughout the United States. Maria's vision is to integrate traditional lifestyle, connect to earth in a contemporary daily life. We have a lot in common that way. And she believes that earth yeah. wisdom comes from the universe through changing mother earth. That I really want to get into. Uh, it's grounding of okay. our spirituality and physical lives and applied in a connection to higher consciousness. Maria teaches that everyone has the ability to be in relationship with earth in all dimensions that they become available. She has written 23 books in the area and her latest is a children's book, Connect to the Earth, and it will hit the stand soon. So welcome. There's so much to talk about and, and with these kind of native traditions, you know, it comes through sitting with masters and sitting with with people that we really get this wisdom. So welcome to the Practical yeah. Shaman podcast today. Oh, well, thanks for having me. And yeah, you know, who dreamed when we were first starting out that we'd now be the elders? Oh, right? No. Did you have to remind it's us? It's always, no matter how much you're in it, like, <laughs> hey, I have like six grandchildren now. So it's like, okay. And it's good. I'm happy to be here. It's, it's an interesting shift in dynamics, though, learning to slow down and being the, the example and letting the kids do it, you know, and uh, so we're having fun with that. Absolutely. So I'm excited about your new book. Oh, yeah, I don't even have one here. Winds of Spirit is it's doing really well. And, you know, it's, oh, it's a Good. big book. It's a big book. And it's going to take us yeah. some time to um, absorb this wisdom back into our lives. So it's kind of been ancient knowledge that's really been buried and not talked about for years. I mean, it's kind of interesting yeah. that we could live our whole life and, and not be in direct relationship to the wind from an early age on. So tell us about your children's book, because yeah. this is great that there's books coming out. Okay. That, that's actually, you know, they, they really are supportive of one another because ever since the day I started doing this work, when I think I was like 10 years old following grandpa around, um, it's been about how we learn and how we accept nature into our lives. And, you know, whether you're looking at it through a spiritual concept, a psychological concept, or, you know, just imaginative creative force, how we relate to nature really does speak to mental health when we're older and how we carry ourselves and are able to present ourselves out into the world and succeed at what we're doing. And um, back in 1972, I started working with ki autistic kids and then and adults uh, with their own inner child stuff. And so through the years, this is, it's always been taken back to earth. The healing comes from the earth. All we do is point them in the right direction and hold the space for them. And, um, and so I got to thinking about it uh, back in December, and uh, we have a new granddaughter. She's not so new anymore. She's three and a half, um, and quite the little lady now. But um, it was, you know, was what is it that I want for my granddaughter's future? And um, so she's the fifth one in the line. And I'm like, okay, well, it, the book actually came together in like five minutes. And, you know, it's like, going back to the earth, you know, if I don't feel safe, I can go out there and I can be in nature and I can play with my imaginary friends or, you know, watch the animals and, 
And basically, even the stuff that we're still using with adults now, um, as we're helping them get back realigned with the planet and what goes on here. And uh, so, you know, everybody knows if, if you got a lot of stress in your body, go lay on some warm grass, a warm rock or the, the warm sand. If you're near a beach, it's going to take all that tension out of you and you're going to feel better and you're going to get healthier. So it's doing that, but trying to pro project it from a child's voice, you know, taking us back to that six to 10 year old range uh, when we still had exploratory imagination. And um, so a, a student of mine um, that's graduated a long time ago and doing her own work now, um, Jill Stevenson put together the illustrations and everybody we've approached about it just loves it. We've got it in a couple of school systems now. They're planning programs around it. We're planning little programs around it to take into different uh, children's organizations. And I'm just really excited for it because, you know, it's an opportunity to know what, what we know and work through that shamanic field um, in a little different way and uh, get kids started with a good foundation. And so, catch them early before you know, the they come about. in. You know, they come in early and they come in knowing mm -hmm. all of this. It's, it's a matter of, we yeah. subtract all of that from them all these years. I remember when I was 30 and um, I just had gotten out of some form of rehab and I was um, sitting on the, the, the stoop painting from this book that I bought called Watercolors for the Artistically Undiscovered. And it was a children's book. So <laughs> for all of the adults out there, think about, you know, there's a lot of children's books coming out. Like we had Darcy Deming here with her Sage Stone. And one of my clients, yeah. just she's getting having a baby and someone sent her this book called Everybody Needs a Rock. So, you know, that this oh, whole idea. Yeah, that's a great one. Yeah, so there's this movement towards, and, and maybe it's, it's for us adults is remembering that childlike self that needs to go back and have beginner's mind. And I was just reminded of that when I was at Omega, one person in my class had the beginner's mind. And it was so oh, important because I needed yeah. to not just carry on like everyone knew, but I needed to start at the beginning. Yeah. And so maybe yeah. that's how we reconnect with the earth is to start with the beginning. What do you think? Uh, oh, I agree. Um, in my, um, we have an online apprenticeship program and we spend like the first year of that, just getting them back into that childlike mind. Because I found, you know, if an adult doesn't get into that childlike mind, a lot of the concepts that we put forth within the shamanic side of what we do, um, intellectually, they can grasp them, but in time that they have to go through. And so we're now like approaching it through that child and a lot of the rituals we do are like the t child's 20 count back from the beginning. So here, this is how we look at life. This is what you do first thing in the morning. And it's just walking them through kind of like that. Well, like here, our traditional lifestyle, we live the old way, you know, now that doesn't mean we, we don't have plumbing and we don't, you know, none of that stuff. What it means is we get up and the first thing we do is we, we greet the sun every morning and we tell creator, thank you for another good day in my life. And then we go out and do our service with the horses here on the ranch and the plants and the garden and stuff. That's our service to mom. And it's just integrating these things um, back into life, including the, oh, oh yeah, let's go on a treasure hunt for rocks. Or let's, let's see uh, how the artwork we can create on the beach with the shells and what we find. You know, we try to make sure we have that in there and go play at least one day a week. Um, because that nurtures us and it brings us into tighter connection with the earth and spirit and ourselves and we, we're more confident as we go forward in life. So it, that's kind of what it's like and, and we're doing that with our students as well. I have found the online thing a little challenging, but we're getting there. <laughs> I know the online thing is an interesting concept because at some ways it allows you to connect with so many people, but there's nothing like sitting yeah. face to face in a room with the people who have also trained yeah. online. And then I get to, 
you know, because you get one one way that you think they are, and then all of a sudden you see them, and they're like, wow, that picture you had yeah. on Facebook was old. You know, like, <laughs> here's a powerhouse woman sitting in front of me, and I don't see that in your picture on Facebook. And not yeah. nothing, nothing knocking Facebook, but I was able to distinguish quickly where people were sitting in the circle, and that was, I don't know, I, I'm, I'm really push, I'm pushing to do uh, some more in-person things because I realized the value of that as well. And yeah, so I hope to do more next year in that way for myself yeah. because we need that. You're gonna find out really, yeah, you're going to find out really grounding with the work that you're doing as well. And um, I found that um, I do like, yeah, we have like four retreats a year that my students come to. So they actually are sitting in circle and immersed in this ceremony. And then we've got little circles, a couple of them that we run throughout the month so that those that can come, we keep that in our lifestyle because it's so easy to walk away from, you know, and lose track of. And I hear from everybody, oh, I don't have time to do that. And yet when we're sticking to our ritual uh, practices, even if it's just, you know, like doing my morning meditation out in the medicine wheel, um, what I find is I have all the time I need to accomplish everything I do. And, uh, you know, so that's a big benefit right there that, you know, you might want to move that ceremonial or ritual or whatever it is you want to call it to the top of your priority list, not the bottom. <laughs> exactly. I think it was, is it the Buddha who says, no time to meditate? Well, meditate an extra hour next time then. You know, like, it's yeah. like we, we're, we're running around like chickens without our head. You know, like, yeah. instead of like really saying stop, stop. Yes. I mean, and, and I, I had this experience where there was no internet everywhere I went for the last uh, three weeks. And I'm there like, what, okay, what is oh, talking nice. me? What's it? Well, no, because in my wild, crazy mind, I'm like trying to connect or trying to, you know, I was planning on those two hours to work every morning. And, and so I yeah. ended up against myself with it. So I really believe I'm going to start to do that. Well, and this is, goes yeah. into living the life with, as a medicine wheel. And, and we're, we're coming into fall here. So in your worldview of the medicine wheel, Talk to, talk to us about the fall and, and, you know, those changes when it starts to get dark later yeah. and the, those wind, those cool yeah. winds are blowing in. And, you know, how do you, how do you, how do you uh, harvest your own garden? Well, right now it is the harvesting of the garden, okay? We put in a lot of time uh, with us when we look at the medicine wheel, of course, it always has to do with the cycles and what's happening on earth. So winter is our starting point. And um, for us, the new year starts in November. Um, and then we are going into, you know, a lot of people look at it as a death and rebirth time and it kind of is. But the way we look at it is more like, okay, Mama Earth just gave birth, and here she's snuggling down with that baby, uh, that new life. And what are they doing most of the time? They're sleeping, okay? So think about the seeds under the ground, sleeping. And um, so traditionally, it's a time of family. It's a time of crafts. It's a time of storytelling, celebration, just good times, you know? And then, because um, in the fall, which we'll get to at the end of this dissertation, uh, we've uh, gotten ready for winter, and that's all I'll say about that right now. <laughs> then you go into the springtime, and it's like you're a racehorse as you get ready, like in about February. You get like a racehorse. You get really pent up. You know, you got cabin fever. You got all these brilliant dreams that have come to you that now you want to make happen, and so, but you can't quite get out there till that spring equinox happens and hit the ground running with it and um, if you can keep up with the energies um, you're going to be able to have this new manifestation of where you're going for the year because part of what comes out of the winter is the dream of the upcoming year and our elders get together every winter solstice and they're telling each other about the dreams they're having and they have this big um, uh, meeting I guess you would call it retreat that's the name we give it these days. Um, so they're all together and they're talking about all these dreams they have and then they piece it together like a jigsaw puzzle. And then that, they bring that 
picture back to the rest of us and give us an idea of some of the things that are going to be happening this year. Um, so with that, then you're going into the spring and you've got this new vision. And so there's the planting of the gardens, there's um, time to fall in love, there's all these beautiful flowery things that are happening. Um, new kids, you know, the whole thing. So you go into summer then and the heat, the heat slows us down. The heat of the earth slows us down. And she brings us to a point where, okay, just like in winter where it was too cold to do much of anything outdoors, in the summer it's so hot that all you can do is relax. Your garden's been planted. It's time to spend time with them lounging around the water, um, giving blessings that it's good water and that we keep that going. So there's still ceremonies through the summer. It's time to see the kids come into their rites of passage. We just did a young girls uh, coming out ceremony uh, this last month. And oh my God, it, it does my heart such good to see the kids coming up in traditional uh, ceremony and uh, learning that they can walk between both worlds and be okay. Um, so these are the things that happen during summer. And then when we go into the fall, well, that late summer, early fall, you know, it cools down. So now we're harvesting the garden, reaping the rewards. Um, it's, it's a lot of work, but it's leisurely work. And that's the one thing that I have gotten taught is leisurely work okay um and to me leisurely as i have learned it means taking time to be in relationship um with the earth with creator with my friends you know like uh hello i think the last time we actually saw each other was like 10 years ago <laughs> so um you know these are things that uh i this is one thing i like about technology i get to see you face to face now instead of like I love the dream time. We do a lot over there, but <laughs> it's nice to see face to face and even better to have hugs. So these are the things that falls about, but falls also about like, if you watch the trees, the dead wood coming down and that speaks to what didn't work this year in our life. Okay. And we, so we cut it off, you know, we're pruning ourselves. We're saying, okay, that project's complete. So let's celebrate that it's complete and then we'll go on to the next one as the winter dreaming comes in. Um, that's one thing I do want to comment on that I find a lot of people really have trouble with. In the slowing down to be in alignment with the planet, to take time to celebrate when we complete things, let it come to completion, celebrate it and move on to the new. Otherwise, what they get is in that um, coyote chasing tail mind, um, the whirlwind. Uh, and, and it's like they never feel fulfilled. Um, and, and so it's, or they're completing, but they're not taking time to celebrate and they just jump into the next project. So they're drained and it's like, you gotta have that time. We used to call it counting coup in Native America. Um, that means that we're, we're celebrating you, you know, your friends get together and celebrate your great accomplishment. You get the, oh yeah, I did this, you know, and then release all the stress that came with doing it. And, and it gives you the energy then to go on to the next thing instead of already being drained from this and then going into this and starting up on low fuel already. So that's kind of the dynamics of the world lately I've been asking people to make medicine wheels and uh, we give out instructions that they don't know how and it's just something I want people to do because this year as we go in into um, the eighth year of the fifth world okay um, some people may not understand that but there's different world dynamics we've been through and you know everybody knows about the Mayan calendar ending but we're in a new time dynamic. That's the short of it, okay? And <laughs> we're going into the eighth year of it. And um, what that means is we're about, we're getting ready for a really big transition here on Earth. Um, the planet's going to start slowing down in its migration a little bit um, with the tilting axis and the reversing of the poles and all the scientific stuff that my scientists love to tell me about that proves native prophecy. So um, 
what I'm asking for with these medicine wheels is kind of a mending of the sacred hoop. Um, if you think about it, the magnetic grid of the planet is a big web. Um, and so every place that a medicine wheel gets put down, we're opening ourselves to connection from Mother Earth. Um, we're saying, yes, I believe it's possible to have a relationship with you and that we do interact just like you're interacting with the winds. And so this is a dynamic that then tells Mother Earth, yeah, we miss this, you know, we want it back. Um, the big anxiety, the big soul sickness of life has been our separation from the planet. Um, that piece has been removed from who we are. And we see it within the indigenous peoples. And we see how in many ways they're living a life that's better than ours because of their philosophical concept of life. And so by telling the planet this, we are open to our dreaming mind that part of us that shows us you know, it may start out as deja vu or whatever, but it's prophetic vision that we open to. And our dreams become more real. They, be, they give us more guidance. And again, all of it's just one more thing to lessen stress in life and bring us all closer together. So, you know, one day down the line, we may actually manifest peace, like the prophecies say. Uh, question, where, um, so do you have like a, a a PDF or something that people can get about how to create a medicine wheel or could you give yes. us a couple of little instructions yes. before we get to there but tell us where they can get this PDF on the medicine okay wheel. you can go to my uh, apprenticeship web yeah and it's spiraldancinglife.org and right at the bottom of that front page there's a slide that says build a medicine wheel. You can click on that and it will take you to a PDF that tells you how to do it. There's a video of me doing my morning offerings to all the stones in mine, um, different discussions about the medicine wheel. So there's quite a bit of resources there that they can pick up on how to do this. And we'll put that okay. link in the, the bottom. Now, I like to... We'll put it in the, oh, the description of this. Okay, great. Um, Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, I, I really believe in this and I, I want as many people to do it as possible. I know we're going to have a big contingency on um, the fall equinox over in the UK. They're going to be doing it. So I'm really excited about how far it's reaching and that people are getting excited about doing it. And, you know, it doesn't have to be our medicine wheel, you know, if other people got different ways of doing the wheel, do it, you know, it's whatever you feel the connection to, because it's in the feeling of connection that the work is done. Absolutely. And, and, and in a, the honoring spirit. So over the yeah. years, you've worked with a lot of elders and what are the elders saying about this time? What are, you know, are they still speaking or are they passing the batons or what's going on with the elders? Well, actually all of the above. <laughs> um, they're still talking. Um, we've lost a few of them in the last few years. Um, and yet then what I've seen is I've been contacted by members of the Kogi tribe. I've been contacted by Incan cousins, a Hopi cousin. So the ones that are like maybe 10 years older than I am, or even a little older, they're starting to take the reins as far as eldership and coordinate things. And they're saying, okay, so let's do it this way now. And, and what we're seeing is actually a lot of the prophecy fulfilling. Um, probably the biggest one that um, I would say I, I'm seeing come to pass right now, uh, came from the Hopi. And in 2007, I was, I was called to bring a group to Hopi and meet with grandfather Martin. He took us up to Prophecy Rock. Uh, you, you, the, and you, the internet cut out. What, who did you meet with? Martin Gassiwioma. Okay. Of the Hopi Fire Club. Okay. And so he took us up to to uh, Prophecy Rock, 
And everybody that was in my group knew about Prophecy Rock, but he told us the story about it and all of that. And then he showed us another rock that was nearby that also has etchings on it. And he told us that was the Prophecy Rock of the Fifth World. Mm -hmm. And so that really was a day because what he explained to us was it was about technology mm -hmm. and how we become the technology of the future. All of this that we're using now goes away. Now, if I tell, you know, some people freak out about that, but it's like, okay, well, it serves its purpose now, but what we're meant to do is learn how to do these things for ourselves, activating the psychic skills that we innately are born with and how to develop those. Because by the end of the fifth world, when we go into the sixth world, um, we're supposed to we're supposed to have mental telepathy and be able to, so this misunderstanding that comes from the spoken words going away um so there's a lot of things that really demonstrate what my family and my tradition call the making of supernaturals, okay? Um, supernaturals, I, you know, the kids are all into these superhero things, right? And it's like, uh-huh, yeah, okay, well, I see this. This is like the making of the supernatural, that you have to go through this, this right in your life, which basically, you know, Spider-Man was bit by a spider and became... Oh, you're frozen. Can you hear so me? I have these trials and challenges. Yeah, I can. Yeah, I just got a note that says we're unstable. Okay. <laughs> so anyway, the making <laughs> that's very funny. <laughs> <laughs> unstable yeah. earth ground we're on. <laughs> unstable earth. <laughs> yeah. She she's vibrating and I feel it. So yeah, the making is super natural that is that mutation, that transition, because it's not just about our healing within our emotional body, it's also about how the changing earth is mutating us physically. And so we have all of this coming about. And um, so I watch it, I watch it. I tell you, working with elders was probably the best thing that ever happened to me. A lot of this from a young age. And then, you know, that service work, there's nothing like a you know, being in the background and, and taking care of somebody and watching them do their thing. And, you know, I love it. You know, different things like that. And, um, and always being honored for what you're doing. Um, you know, they, yeah. they always, they've always shown me I was loved well. <laughs> yeah, that is the interesting part, you know, that for when I first um, went to the Anipi ceremony, you know, no one sits there and tells you anything. The learning comes from putting the blankets on and taking the blankets off for, you know, 10 years and sitting in the circle. It's not like, hey, now read a book and you're going to all understand this. It didn't just didn't work that way. And, you know, since we're a society that wants it now, that we can get it now and get all the information now, uh, this is an unlearning type of a process that you're speaking of in some ways. Yeah. Better we should go yeah. back and read children's um, books. <laughs> Maybe you should connect to the earth will help you. Um, right. What I am seeing though, along with these prophecies is there is a melding of ways. It's like my kids, you know, um, my son and I, my partner and I have an adopted daughter and they've taken, you know, the old way, the way we taught them and they, they're merging it with the new way. So one's a doctor, one's a, a counselor and they put, our practices in with what they're doing. And that's what I see coming about is there's a nice melding of things. But like you and I were talking, the hands on being their oral way of getting taught, you know, that never loses its value. And mm -hmm. so I don't really see that going away. Um, but I like some of the merging I see happening as well. Absolutely. So, so what was what would be uh, an inspirational idea or a medicine wheel way or a practice that you'd like to leave people with from this conversation today? Okay. Um, one of the things on the medicine wheel is we look at from east to west is a good red road and from south to north for us is the 
is the spirit road. Um, so this speaks to the balance of masculine feminine energies. And it's probably the easiest practice that I have. And it's always made a difference. If I don't do it, my day is totally screwed up. So in the morning, I get up and I look at the sun and I say, thank you for another good day in my life. And when I go to bed at the night, I look at the moon and I say, thank you for another good day in my life. Um, I've had enough dear, near death experiences in my life that, you know, that statement actually has meaning. Um, but also, um, it does. It really balances the feminine and the masculine so that we're receiving with clarity uh, the messages that we're aware of, like the animals that go by. Oh, yeah. You know, it doesn't matter whether you know intellectually the, the animal's medicine meaning or not. What you know is how it makes you feel to acknowledge that you saw it. You know, that this is an awareness that comes with balance. And, and so that would be the practice I would advise because it opens you up to so much more. And it's so easy. <laughs> Lift your cup and say good morning, world, if that's what you can do. <laughs> oh, and here was this in good morning, world. Good morning, world. <laughs> Well, this comes to the end of this time, but we'll have to have you, you know, for some more time. And this uh, Practical Shaman podcast comes weekly. And there's always, you know, 30 minutes of juicy, juicy, you know, it, wisdom. It's not necessarily yeah. advice unless you take it. But I really want to thank you for, for joining us today and, and, and look forward to having you back again before 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> well thank you Renee and, and thank you for going out and fulfilling your destiny oh thanks <laughs> it's so much fun to watch <laughs> you know one time the psychic said to me I don't know if it was 30 years ago and she told me that I didn't have to chase my tail that I could sit on the curb for the next you know 10-15 years and my destiny would find me and at the time I yeah. thought maybe I'd get there a little faster so yeah, but, but it did eventually find me and in a way that I wasn't even looking. So that is very true. So those of you who don't think you're on your soul's path, you are. You yeah. are. And, you, you are. know, it may look different, but you're there. So you're already there. Um, and thank you again. Yeah. Maria, and we'll see you real soon. Okay, sweetheart. Take care. Bye. <laughs> and make sure to subscribe to this podcast so you don't ever miss a single episode, everyone. Oh, yeah. Go get it. <laughs>